morning guys today is part two on how to plan a motorhome road trip around europe but i hope there's lots of tips in there for caravanners and campers too this wasn't supposed to be a two-part series but when i filmed it all as one it was about 50 minutes long which is far too long so i split it into two for you but this episode is just dedicated to camping overnight spots wild camping campsites how we find them i hope you find some useful pointers in here especially if you've never done it before it can be, in fact it was for us, incredibly intimidating to go overseas, not really understand the rules or where you're particularly heading. And that first time we found, it was quite scary. Um, it's March now, it's March 2018. March 2017, we didn't have a motorhome. We didn't know anything about any of this. In May, we bought our first motorhome and we went to Wales for our first weekend away on the May bank holiday, I think it was. And we had a brilliant time, but I insisted on staying in a proper campsite because I knew that that was allowed. And I knew that we would be safe, as safe as you ever are on somewhere that's public. And I knew that we weren't gonna get ourselves into any trouble. And my husband was like, okay, let's go and, and wild camp and do this because he'd read about all this stuff and I never had. And I was like, we're going to get arrested or we're going to get woken up at three o'clock in the morning by an angry person or an angry policeman and demanded that we move on and where we're we going to go. And I didn't like the idea of that at all. It terrified me and I fought and I fought and I said no. And we got through that trip in Wales and I did a little bit more research. And then in July, we went up to Scotland. And I knew that wild camping in Scotland was more tolerated. So I was quite happy to head off to Scotland and not have a plan. I say quite happy. That first couple of nights was like, where are we going to stop? I don't know where we're going. I don't know where to put in the sat nav. I don't know any of this stuff. But we wild camped our way around Scotland and we picked up lots of tricks and lots of tips, which I'm hoping to share with you guys. And then two weeks later, we set off for Europe. And by this point, I was like, ah, we didn't die. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Which is a good thing, to be fair, because I looked at booking campsite and I looked at uh, where we we're going to go in a rough route and we changed our minds completely. And one thing we have learned over, what's it now, 10 months of motorhoming is we're not good at sticking to a plan that we think we're going to follow. Okay. So there are three, possibly four, depending on how you split it, different types of campsites. There are big, actual, proper campsites. Often they've got swimming pools or kids' play areas or dog runs or proper facilities like showers and toilets. And they often cost a lot more money. Um, so they're generally, I don't know, 20 to 30 pounds in the UK and roughly the equivalent around Europe which is expensive, but if you have children or pets, then they are brilliant for having on-site entertainment. You don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to worry about them, the kids can run riot. It's um, really useful. You'll stay in one place for a week, two weeks, whatever, and you can just chill and relax. And a lot of people enjoy that, and that's great. However, we, because we don't have young kids or pets, we try and find sites or places where you allow overnight parking, but it doesn't cost anywhere near as much. Uh, I mentioned them briefly on the other video. These are things like Airs in France, Sosters in Italy. In Germany, they're apparently called Stellplatz, but we've not actually been to any of them yet. But they're places where you pay five to 10 pounds a night, very, very limited facilities. They might have showers or toilets, but they're not clean very often. So you would probably prefer to use them on board if you have them. They are first come, first served. You can't book them. You kind of plot them into your GPS and you hope that there's a space. What we found was that people tended to move during the day, like from about, I don't know, 11 a.m. till four. And around four, they started filling up really quickly. People didn't tend to drive long distances, which was totally alien to us because we would drive six, seven hours a day. If you're going to do short hops, then I would suggest leaving perhaps a little earlier, maybe 10-ish, and try and getting somewhere for, I don't know, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. People can come and go as they want. So you might find that there is a space later in the evening. People perhaps have moved on when it's cooler. Um, in fact, we did see that in Italy a lot, people moving in the cooler hours and they were just camping and hiding from the heat during the day. In Switzerland, when we were wild camping, people were just driving and coming and going all over the time. So it does vary depending on where you're at. 
We paid as little as, I think it was two euros for our cheapest one in Italy. And I think the most we paid was 10 euros a night. But that was a really nice site right on the riverbank. You can generally stay in one place for, I think two to three days is generally the maximum that's allowed. Uh, a lot of them just have ticket machines, just like a car park. You go, you pay your money. So take cash in the currency of the country that you're going to visit because a lot of them didn't take notes and they didn't take cards. You had to have coins and you literally pull up. It's first come, first served. If there's a space that you can get into, amazing. If there's not, sorry, tough luck, move on to the next one. The good thing is that Europe is so much better set up for camping, caravanning, motorhoming than the UK is. There are literally hundreds of these things. Well, I'm guessing across Europe, there are thousands of these things. We were around the Italian lakes and they were, they were just all over the place. So if they are full, if you don't manage to get into the one that you have specially selected, you can move on and find another one nearby. And we went across and did the Italian lakes in the middle of August. I can hear the door opening again. He's there. Everyone always says they never see him, but he just sort of slinks in and out of the room. Hi. I'm not here. You're not here? I'm a secret, secret. Uh-huh. Uh, you're just a voice recording that I record. I am a voice recording. Hi, you're I, here. I, I, I'm, I'm like Siri. You're Siri. I'm Siri. Hi, Siri. Hi. <laughs> Am I going to get a cup of tea off. today, Siri? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, sorry, I didn't realise you were recording. Oh, why? Would you like a drink? No, thank you. Are you sure? Yes, thank okay. you. We, we've done that already in a video. You can't repeat yourself. That's boring. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't even know where I was anymore. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking about airs and sosters and, and legal places for motorhoming that you can stop overnight, but they're a lot cheaper than a campsite. They have very, very basic facilities. Occasionally they do have toilets and showers and they will, if they have them, they'll generally always have a male and a female um, and occasionally a disabled, but they're not cleaned very regularly. And I think if you're used to UK campsites, you'll find some of them quite shocking. They're generally pretty manky, full of spider webs. Um, and I would suggest if you have facilities on board your own vehicle, you use them. But if you don't, they do have them there and maybe you don't mind spiders. Um, me and Jade generally would never go in them. But that's okay, because we have showers and toilets on board, so we're fine. They generally all have a water refill point, a chemical waste disposal point, and a grey waste disposal point. And a lot of them had what's called a motorhome service point, so you could just pull in, and you can empty all your waste at the same time, you can empty your toilet, and you can refill with fresh water. While I'm on the subject of fresh water, I would advise that you never, ever, ever drink the water from any tap across Europe. Use it for showering, for cleaning. If you're gonna boil it for drinks, then fine. But we always, always buy and use bottled water for drinking. To be honest, even in our kettle, we will put bottled water in, which might be a waste of money, but at least we don't get some nasty stomach bug. Um, they're just not always drinkable and they're not always clearly labeled if they are or are not. So I would recommend that you don't use them. But those are the airs and the sausages, and we prefer them purely because they are designated motorhome or caravan parking areas. I want to reassure everyone who's like, I can't possibly do that, it's too terrifying. Actually, it's not. It just takes a little bit of knowledge and then a little bit of, honestly, guts um, to just do it. And you could always have a campsite booked somewhere if it makes you feel better. The last type of campsite if you like or camping place uh, is wild camping as i think i mentioned on a previous video they are not really legal because everywhere in europe is owned by someone and most of the time you're not allowed you don't certainly don't have any rights to just pull up and stay for the night you might well get away with it if you're in a very quiet secluded area or if you have a camper van that looks like a normal van you might well get away with it but if you're a motorhome or a caravan it, it, it's your own risk if you're not worried about being woken up in the middle of the night by some angry person asking that you move off their land fine go for it you might get a free night's sleep um, we find that we sleep a lot better and we're a lot less stressed if we are in a proper place where we know that we're allowed to stay overnight, we've paid our minimal fee and that works best for us. But obviously this 
covers all types of sites. So there are places on the websites that I'm going to show you that are free. So what I'm going to now is show you the websites that we use and how we select a place to stay. So I'm going to do this in real time with you to show you how we find somewhere to stop. The very first place that I ever go to is searchforsites.co.uk. Um, just to avoid any doubt, I am in no way affiliated with these guys. They're just a great site that I use on a weekly basis and I highly, highly recommend them. So one of the first places in Germany that we're going to go near is Basel, which is actually in Switzerland. But as you can see, it's right on the border between um, Switzerland and Germany. So I type in Basel, as I've just done, and you can see here all these motorhome stop points. Now, just to the right, you've got an independent campsites, which are these green tents. You've got overnight parking, no services, which I think, yeah, they're the light blue. And if you saw what I did then, I just pressed where the little tick is and that gets rid of them. So if we didn't want an independent campsite, you deselect it and you saw the little green tent had disappeared. We've got overnight parking, which is the lighter blue, and we've got overnight parking with services, which is the darker blue. And often there are many, many different types down here, but those are obviously the only three that are available within our search radius. I'm not sure how big the search radius is. I think the maximum is 50 miles that comes up from your centre point, which for us today is Basel. And you can see that little black line. So that is the border of Switzerland and Germany. Now we're going somewhere around here. So actually these ones here are very interesting to us. So I'm just going to randomly click on one and I will tell you now it takes me maybe half an hour to an hour sometimes to find a place that I really like the look of. So don't expect it to take 30 seconds. It can do. You can just select the first one you, you click on. But we tend to uh, take a little bit longer. So here it's got authorised motorhome parking, day or night, no services. No services doesn't bother me. Now this says it's free. Perfect. Have you been here? So go to the first one, the first review, and the first thing I always look at is we didn't stop here because there's a height barrier of 2.1 metres. Now, us and most other motorhomes are not going to get under 2.1 metres. So immediately, I'm shutting that down. Now, there isn't a way, unfortunately, of putting an X on it so that we know next time we come to look at that that we can't go there. I wish there was. If anyone here from Search for Sites is watching, please just, just put a little thing so we can deselect it because that would be brilliant. So the next one we go on to is authorised motorhome parking, day or night, no services, fine. Located a small car park, close to a restaurant, car park is small, not good for a large motorhome. Again, that doesn't sound good for us. See what it takes a little while to shut down that one, let's click on the next one. Uh, that looks like the same place, I've got the same name, so let's go here. San Louis La Chaussée. La Chaussée. Overnight parking, no services. We really like this place, although we were a bit confused by the barriers when we arrived. There were people in the building, despite it being closed to the public in winter, so we asked if we could park for the night. The place was quite busy with lots of walkers, so it felt safe to leave the motorhome in the day. Kind of weird knowing you don't have your passport. We did that in Italy. We crossed into Switzerland without even realising it. Like, oops, accidental invasion. Okay, so those actually sound quite positive. It's open from January to December. Pay attention. A lot of them aren't open during the winter. And there have been a few times when we're like, yes, go there, and then notice that it's been shut. So there's obviously toilets. Barrier to the main bit of the car park. Now, I don't think we'd get through that. But they parked on the outside edge of the car park, which is obviously got more than enough space there. Now, we're going to be traveling with our trailer and our bike. So I'm looking for something like this that has got lots of space for a motorhome with a trailer to pull up. And that's the general area, which looks nice enough. It's obviously got a bit of kids' play part, always a good thing. So this one, I really like the look of, and again, really wish there was a way of, ah, there is on this one, sorry. I've selected favourites on that. So if I now go back to my site, and press refresh, I wonder, yeah, I've never used that before. There we go. I've now got a little heart on the one that I like the look of. It's good to know. That's good to know. So I've done those three. I like the look of that one. Let's go for one that has got services. This is an overnight motorhome service point and a night stop. So again, 
there aren't any reviews, nobody's been there. Now those there are definitely motorhome parking bays, although it looks a bit odd. If you were in either of those corners and there was somebody parked here, I think you'd struggle getting out of those. Interesting, interesting. That would worry me slightly, although I suppose you could park in one of the other ones. Um, that looks good. That's 11 pounds for the, uh, 11 euros, sorry, for the night. And shut. So there's obviously toilets. That looks like quite a decent barrier to the main bit of the car park. Now, I don't think we'd get through that. But they parked on the outside edge of the car park, which is obviously got more than enough space there. Now, we're going to be traveling with our trailer and our bike. So I'm looking for something like this that has got lots of space for a motorhome with a trailer to pull up. And that's the general area, which looks nice enough. It's obviously got a bit of kids play park, always a good thing. So this one, I really like the look of, and again, really wish there was a way of, ah, there is on this one, sorry. I selected favorites on that. So if I now go back, to my site. Refresh, refresh. I wonder. Yeah, I've never used that before. There we go. I've now got a little heart on the one that I like the look of. It's good to know. That's good to know. So I've got all of those in that area for basil. I would select the one that we've got the little heart on. Now again, these are just pull up. So you can change your mind. It doesn't matter. If we decide to come in by another route, you can lose, you can use search for sites on an iPad, which I do all the time when we're driving, or if you get car sick, stop and do it. Uh, and just pick a route and that shows you where you want to go. Okay, so let's shut those windows down. The second website that we use is called Camper Contact. Now, this was recommended to us by one of our subscribers called Bill, and thank you very much, Bill. We really, really appreciate it. Never heard of this before, but look how many. This is just Germany, and if you click on that one to the left, there's all across Europe. So we're going to stay with Germany, um, but all across Europe, it's got these, and so we know where we're going. We're going down this corner here. We're going to zoom in. There's bars all there. So that's what the area that we're looking at. Now, I don't actually know which route we're going to do this. I don't know where, when we're going to go to Basel. It might be our first one. It might be later in. I'm just doing this to illustrate how I would find somewhere. So again, obviously, they haven't got any down here because these are just the German sites. Let's click on this one. Rhine Stellplatz. Now, Germany, they're called Stellplatz. So I'm guessing this is on the banks of the Rhine. Oh, look at that. Okay, I may have just found a new site that I like. How stunning. Monster Bridge, but that's pretty. Now, one thing I just need to see is how big the space. Yeah, let's see, this is a problem. We can get in it fine, but we've got a trailer. We're not going to get in that with a trailer. Oh, that's a great shame because that's beautiful. Maximum camper length, seven metres. Yeah, unfortunately, we are too big. Oh, well, let's see if there's a setting that gets rid. Oh, so there we go. So, minimum eight metres. I want to go by the river now. Now I've seen that, I want to go by. Ah, this is Bad Bellingen. Bad Bellingen is one of these spa towns in Germany which looks amazing. So those are the two sites that I use most of all. If we're in the UK, I also use park4night.com. These guys have got an awful lot of good stuff, but I find their website really hard work, which is the main reason I don't use them so much. Um, so let's go, let's see what they've got for bars. They've got an awful lot as well. It's just preference. You don't have to check every single camping site that has ever been put on there. You'll be here all day. I'm just doing this really to show you. My goodness me, look at that lot. Never really use these guys for Europe. Maybe I should. Maybe 
on the show. And the reason we use them in the UK as well is because it shows you where you can stay basically for free. Revenue design near Basel, this is in Milan, for six motorhomes, paved square, small green areas, and a barbecue, 11 euros. It seems like the German sites are more expensive than the Italian sites so far, I would say. We're looking at around 10 euros per night. I don't know what the green that is. Free place. Ooh, with a swimming pool. So there we go, guys. I hope you found that useful, helpful, and perhaps learn a thing or two. If you have any other questions, please ask below. I will do my best to answer them. I am going to do a question and answer video in a week or two because I am getting some questions coming through on Facebook and occasionally on Instagram. So I will try and answer those as best I possibly can so that anyone else who might have the same questions can have the answers as well. In the meantime, I wish you all a brilliant day wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And we will see you very soon. Take care. Bye.